The Spartan 2 program in the Halo video game franchise selected genetically superior human specimens and subjected them to surgical and chemical augmentations to make them into elite super soldiers to fight against a hostile alien force. In this video, I will discuss the augmentations these soldiers underwent and whether we can recreate them in real life to create our own super soldiers. The augmentations produced increased height, unbreakable bones, muscle enhancements providing superhuman strength and speed, improved eyesight, and increased speed of nerve transmission, which allowed for increased reaction time, increased speed of thought, and increased speed of communication between brain and muscle. The first augmentation is occipital capillary reversal, and the purpose of this is to improve the eyesight of the soldiers. A neurosurgeon rearranges the capillaries in the left occipital lobe of the brain, which is an area responsible for visual processing, and this causes increased blood flow to the rods and cones of the retina, which are the cells that detect light and are responsible for our ability to see. I'm a neuroscientist and I'm not aware at the moment of any procedure where rearranging blood vessels could increase the blood flow to the retina, but perhaps in the future we could have some kind of technique similar to this. But regardless, the purpose is to improve the eyesight of the soldiers. And there are things we can do in real life to improve our eyesight naturally. So we can take key vitamins and minerals from foods like carrots, red peppers, broccoli, spinach, strawberries, sweet potato and citrus. We can exercise. We can wear protective eyewear. So when we're in the lab or welding or something like this where you could have dangerous objects like potentially threatening the eyes. We can wear sunglasses to protect our eyes from UV damage and we don't want to spend more than 20 minutes at a time looking at one thing. So there's a thing called the 20-20-20 rule where every 20 minutes you look at something 20 feet away for 20 seconds. So this is just so that our eyes aren't constantly using the same muscles all the time. We're kind of varying and using our peripheral vision and moving our eyes about in different ways rather than just having them focus on one thing which can put a lot of strain on your eyes. And it's also good to just rest your eyes every now and then, just closing them for a minute or so like throughout the day. And obviously we shouldn't look at very bright lights like the sun because they can damage our retina. We should avoid smoking and we should keep our hands clean and try not to touch our eyes too much with our hands. And it's also important to use your peripheral vision instead of just your tunnel vision. So a lot of the time we don't really pay attention to what's going on in the edges of our vision. We're just hyper focused on what's in front of us. And that leads to a loss in our ability to focus on our peripheral vision because we're not practicing uh, using that function of the eye. And if you want to improve like all aspects of your vision, then you need to focus on your peripheral vision as well, not just your tunnel vision. So a good way to do this is to go out for a walk and not focus on anything in particular, just kind of take in everything you can see in your field of vision rather than like narrowing in on one specific feature of the environment like we usually do when we're looking at a screen for example. So for unnatural methods we can improve our eyesight by implanting a bionic lens which replaces our biological lens and it focuses light more effectively than our biological lens but it does require surgery and very expensive of course. The next augmentation is a catalytic thyroid implant. And this is a platinum pellet implanted into the thyroid gland and this basically increases human growth hormone production which leads to increased height. Human growth hormone is most useful for increasing height during puberty while we're still growing taller which is why this augmentation takes place at the onset of puberty around 14 years old. And the result of this is increased height. Master Chief is 6 foot 10 without his armour or just over 2 metres tall. And in real life you can take human growth hormone like exogenously in the form of an injection but if we want to increase human growth hormone naturally then you can do this by performing high intensity exercise like sprints or weight training. You can lose body fat, optimize your sleep, you can do intermittent fasting which is where you have a limited window in which you can eat and you fast for the rest of the day. So you eat in like an 8 hour window and then you fast for 16 hours every day. You can reduce your sugar intake and there are some supplements that could increase human growth hormone such as arginine, GABA, glutamine, creatine, ornithine, L-DOPA and glycine. 
But since human growth hormone is most used for increasing height during puberty, increasing it during adulthood won't increase your height that much. So a surgical alternative is bone lengthening surgery, which can increase your height up to four inches. Basically, the femur in your upper leg is broken and then a scaffold is put in place and new bone grows across the gap where the break was. And you can increase your height up to four inches with this method. The next augmentation is superconducting fibrification of neural dendrites. And this basically means you have increased speed of nerve transmission. Along our nerve cells, we have a fatty layer called a myelin sheath, which basically insulates the nerve cell and allows for faster propagation of the electrical signal through the axon of the neuron. And this augmentation replaces this myelin sheath with a superconducting material and it basically speeds up the rate of transmission so that it's much faster than our normal biological speed of transmission. And the result of this is increased reaction time, uh, increased intelligence, memory and creativity. And we can naturally increase our speed of neurotransmission by increasing myelination. So this is basically making the myelin sheath around our axon thicker. And this is just done by basically practicing something over and over. The neurons associated with that action, they become more myelinated and they become more efficient at performing that action. And besides practice, you can stay warm Warm. So heat means that atoms in the neurons are more energetic, meaning they're moving around more and this allows them to work more effectively. And you can drink water to stay hydrated because like 70% of our cells are water and you can exercise, which will improve blood flow, which means more oxygen is delivered to the neurons and, and they are more able to create ATP, which is used for energy. And besides increased speed of neurotransmission, the purpose of this augmentation is to improve intelligence and memory and creativity. And this can be done through several ways such as exercise, meditation, challenging yourself mentally like playing chess or learning a musical instrument or a new language, socializing, a good sleep and a healthy diet, particularly reducing sugar intake. The next augmentation is muscular enhancement injections and this is basically just steroids in the real world. So things that make your muscles denser, stronger, and larger. And we can develop our muscles by either injecting steroids or training in the gym for strength and hypertrophy. And the last augmentation is called carbide ceramic ossification. And this is where the outer layer of the bone is uh, removed and it's replaced by a ceramic layer, which basically makes the bone unbreakable. And the closest thing we have in real life to this is bioactive glass, which you put into the bone after it's broken and it acts as like a scaffold, which can enhance bone growth to repair the bone. And it can contain trace amounts of growth promoting materials like copper, zinc and strontium to make the bones stronger. But we can still strengthen our bones naturally by increasing our calcium intake, getting enough vitamin D from sunlight or supplements, eating a high protein diet, getting enough magnesium and zinc in our diet, as well as omega-3 fatty acids from fish like salmon or from supplements. We can stay at a reasonable weight. You don't want to be so light that your bones aren't under any stress from your own body weight. Ideally, you want to perform some weight-bearing exercises that stress the bones slightly, like walking, jogging, or strength training. And we want to limit smoking and alcohol and make sure we're getting enough micronutrients from eating lots of vegetables. In order to recover from all the procedures, the subjects perform stretches, isometric exercises, light sparring drills, and they consume five high protein meals. And after each meal, they receive vitamin and mineral injections. We don't have the technology to perform these augmentations in real life yet, but we can replicate it to the best of our ability by optimizing our sleep and diet, by pushing ourselves mentally and physically. And optionally, you could take exogenous substances like testosterone, you could get surgical procedures done like the bone lengthening procedure, but obviously these are much more extreme and come with some serious health risks. So I don't recommend those at all. And we can do a lot to like optimize our health just by controlling our sleep, diet and exercise and have our bodies functioning at peak performance as close as we can get to these Spartans from Halo. I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, I'm very interested in biohacking, optimizing health and performance, all that kind of stuff. So if you're interested in that as well, then follow my channel and I'll see you in the next video.